I'm here with Paul Kellaway, who is the Assistant Director at the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA. Paul, thanks very much for taking time to speak to me today. I'd really like to ask you some questions around consumer behaviours and uh, the developments around legal professions in the, in the future and uh, touching on regulation towards the end. So thinking about consumer behaviours and expectations, how would you say they're changing in the way in which legal services will be delivered in the future? Um, I think consumer behaviour is changing generally to be um, a lot more sort of a desire for more instant gratification and quick service. Um, you know, the expectation that you can go go from identifying that you want to do something to having it done as soon as possible. And I think um, you know, particularly use of internet and things like that. Anything else in life, you know, you want it to have already happen before you've already you've bought it or you've ordered it almost. Um, and I can sort of envisage that sort of becoming more of an issue with um, legal services. So almost like an instant demand and supply. Yeah, and I think sort of as well knowing, you know, it's, it's, you know when you order something off Amazon you, you sort of see it tracks and where I live I, I get a little map and it shows me where the, the driver and the li- is, is at that moment in time. I think you're know, actually understanding, even if you appreciate the case is going to take a while, understanding where that case is on the way to actually completion is something that a lot of people I think will start to appreciate more and demand more. So value around visibility of yeah. um, status, okay. And thinking about the changing needs then of the of the future uh, for that cons- type of consumer, what kind of legal professionals will be needed to meet those consumer needs? I think fundamentally it's the same set of core skills that um, legal service providers are giving now. You know, it's about having the authority and being trustworthy um, and having the knowledge and expertise to deliver those services. But at the same time I think also reflecting um, perhaps more on what it is that the client actually wants and how it's delivered. Um, the end product might be the same, you know, a good piece of advice, but actually how you to take the, uh, the client through and deliver it is going to be the key bit. Understanding, you know, you know some of those challenges and what people um, are increasingly wanting to get from their provider. Okay, and thinking about legal technology, would you say that it's a driver or an enabler of future legal service delivery? I think it depends on what the type of services that the client wants. Um, in some cases, you know, the enab- it's going to be an enabler, you know, it's about, you know, that example of how uh, you communicate through a client's case, you know, or even you know just the, some of the things like how you present price information. You know, getting you know using the internet and websites to actually make things more easily available. But at the same time, whether or not um, for some things like you know document services, wills, uh, and things where you can use templates, whether or not increasingly people want to do a bit more self-service, and we'll start looking for those sorts of options rather than paying the full whack for someone to sit and hold their hand and go through it, but still having the range of options of how they are actually choosing a service. And would you say that's any different for consumers that you might determine to be vulnerable in some way, that if, they, if they're if they perhaps not as savvy to be able to complete part of that yeah. work themselves? I mean, certainly some of the work that we've been doing with the Competition Markets Authority on Vulnerable Consumers um, recently has been sort of thinking a lot about that sort of digital divide and how confident people are and sort of making sure that whilst you know technology is an enabler or, or a driver um, that actually um, people do need different help in different ways and still are offering those sort of more traditional ways of living things face to face, going into the office, having a conversation on the phone um, and I think being very alive to that and not assuming that you know there is one size that fits all for all types of consumers and clients. Um, you know, and also that people dip in and out of vulnerability in different ways. It's not just about you know physical disability, there's mental health issues which may become um, more or less prevalent at different times in different people's lives, and also the circumstances that they're in. You know, dealing someone, helping someone through a state administration or probate, you know, getting the, the initial release of funds to help pay for a funeral, say, um, requires a particular set of uh, skills and sensitivities that you might not necessarily need in conveyancing, but still also having those client management skills to actually address and um, speak to people when all of a sudden that sale collapses. Okay, and thinking about then risks for consumers, if you had to pick the top three risks for consumers that are arising from the changing legal landscape, what might they be? So I think the big things that are very likely with me is around, the first one is around affordability, um, sort of things like um, changes to legal aid, 
Um, and also um, perceptions of the affordability. It's not even just what it costs, what people think it might do. And then combined with the confusion that could be possible around what different types of lawyers can do for them. You know, what's his, what are the reserved activities? If they even know what reserved activities are, you know, what's the solicitor? What's the chartered uh, legal executive? What's the licensed conveyancer? What can they do? What does it mean? Um, and actually, whether or not they're going to get the same protection, you know, do they go with the word that they're more familiar with, or the title they're more familiar with, or do they sort of just choose the first one that they come across? And I think that leads to sort of the third risk around this beyond confusion, which is inaction, where people have, you know, need legal advice or help. Um, but don't choose it because they get overwhelmed or they just don't know where to begin. Um, or, as I say, they just, they're worried it's going to be too expensive, so let's just see how it goes and you know, maybe throw more money at it down the line. Okay, so I'm taking from that then it's issues around affordability, accessibility and perhaps a, a, an understanding or a lack of understanding around professional title. Yeah, and I think as well because of that confusion around title, particularly the, the debate around whether or not a, a professional is regulated or authorised or not, and what that means in practice um, is going to be quite significant. We've seen recently stories about a uh, case about unregulated providers um, issuing advice. And I think that's where it's important to make sure that people understand um, what it is that's available and what the difference is. And to the extent possible, sort of ironing out some of the minor differences so that you know there's a baseline that you can rely on. And even if you're not going through a regulated professional, understanding what that means for you. Okay, and if I can just um, conclude with asking about how you think regulation needs to evolve to continue to maintain public trust and confidence in light of those risks, what, what would your views be on that? So I think regulation needs to be um, proportionate and it needs to not impose unnecessary burdens because if those burdens are passed on to the clients, it's the clients that lose out ultimately. But they need to make sure that there is the adequate protection there, you know, whether or not it's indemnity insurance or just knowing that someone who's not a very good egg sort of is, isn't kept in the profession indefinitely um, and that there are you know, proportionate sanctions are ways of dealing and addressing with poor performance. Um, fundamentally, you know, people need to trust the legal professionals that they go to. Um, and I think the moment that you lose trust in those professionals, that's where danger really lies. You know, if you don't trust a solicitor and you just go, okay, I'll just go whoever's cheapest, regardless of what their training or qualifications or indemnity insurance might be, that's where I think you can risk, end up very much risking um, consumer harm. Okay, Paul, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.